What up, what up, Salvador Bergen here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Deepest Five YouTube channel. On this channel, we love to talk about crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, how you can raise money for your dream, for your passion, how you can monetize that and actually impact the world. And specifically today, we're getting into music crowdfunding and whether or not you can actually quit your job once you learn the process, once you actually learn the skills, when you develop the ability to raise money from the crowd, which is actually a very powerful skill set, when you actually learn how to do that, can you actually use this and quit your job? Can you go full time on this? Can you become a musician in the way that you've always want it to be. So I'm going to go through actually some very realistic points. You do have to be willing to listen to this. You got to be willing to really take it in. And I think that there's a lot of different types of people out there, but I do think this would be very applicable to you if you're trying to do a campaign, let's just say in the $10,000 to $65,000 range. Some of the stuff that I'm talking about is going to be very important for you. So listen up. Uh, if you already have been watching my other videos, you enjoy the stuff I put out on this channel, give me a thumbs up as well so that I know that. Without further ado, let's get straight into today's YouTube video. All right, man, so let's start talking about this. Now, when it comes to crowdfunding, when it comes to you, right, trying to raise money as a musician, and you're trying to do as a band, you're trying to raise money for an album, you're trying to raise money for tours, whatever you're trying to do, right, this is really gonna be applicable for you. So can you quit your job? So the first way I want you to start thinking about this is the different forms of crowdfunding and how that fits into your overall business strategy as a musician. I know business is like not something that a lot of musicians like to talk about, but it is so incredibly important. That's really what's gonna lead you to a strong structural foundation for your career as a musician and also for your band. So first of all, there is traditional rewards-based crowdfunding. With traditional rewards-based crowdfunding, the main sites out there are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. There are a bunch of other niche sites as well, which you can put on the radar. But I'd say the biggest ones are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Kickstarter obviously being an all or nothing fundraising website. Indiegogo being flexible funding, so you can actually keep what you raise. Even if you don't necessarily hit your goal, you can still keep the funds which you have raised on Indiegogo. So to give you an idea, let's say that you're running a campaign, your goal is maybe 10,000 bucks, right? You wanna raise 10,000 bucks. So let's just say you end up raising $20,000. What ends up happening there? How does that play into rewards-based crowdfunding? How does that play into your career? How should you really be thinking about this? So if I came to you and I was like, dude, here's $20,000, you would be excited, you'd be over the moon, right? You can go out there, you can do your creative work, you really enjoy your craft and you can produce cool stuff. But what are the obligations tied to that and how does that fit into your business strategy? So first of all, you're gonna get a lump sum, okay? You got a lump sum of cash and this goes into your bank account, okay? This typically happens after 14 days after a Kickstarter campaign, it happens a little bit after for when it comes to doing the Indiegogo campaign. So basically you run a campaign, maybe you're doing this Indiegogo or Kickstarter for about 30 days. It's gonna vary obviously from person to person. Let's just say you're doing a campaign for 30 days, you're trying to raise $10,000, you end up raising $20,000. This money goes into and flows into your bank account. And then one that's been happening is you have to fulfill what are called perks or rewards. So hear me out. Why did people donate? Why did people give money? Why did people wanna become a part of this crowdfunding campaign. The reason why is that they wanted access to cool perks and rewards. So that could be things like posters from your band, that could be t-shirts, swag, that could be albums, memorabilia, that could be things like digital things, digital content, digital artwork. Um, that could even be things, you know, you talk about later like NFTs, but I would say really it's things that people get access to as a result of actually backing your campaign or maybe tour dates. They get an access to an actual ticket where they can go to a tour date. Um, actually, there's a really interesting uh, camp case study that I have in the free course I'm sharing today where this guy ended up doing a cave concert for his band and for his work and they ended up raising actually $300,000, which is really cool. So that's a case study I'm gonna be talking about uh, a little bit later. But anyways, so there's a bunch of different stuff which you can offer as rewards. These are what are perks and rewards that must be fulfilled after this money comes into your bank account. So you have a certain amount of time to fulfill these rewards. So a lot of times when you think of crowdfunding, you think of like, wow, I raised all of this funding, right? But at the same time, there are obligations tied to that. You gotta ship out your perks and rewards. You gotta do fulfillment and there's shipping and logistics which go into that. Right, so you kind of think of this almost as like pre-ordering. Okay, you're basically pre uh, doing a pre-order campaign, where you're getting drumming up interest before you actually have this thing that you're producing, and then you actually go out there, you produce it, and then you're actually starting to ship out your perks and your rewards. So the first thing that you should take away is, okay, so I can raise funds, right? Obviously, I can raise funds with crowdfunding. It's proven. Many other people have done it. There's a process to this. If I learn this process, it can work. I can get results. The number one thing is not necessarily the funds, though. Okay, so hear me out. The number one thing isn't the funds. The number one thing is actually the people, the backers, the fans. So there's a great article out there called 1,000 Fans by Kevin Kelly. Great article, go and read it. I've read it before, it's great, it's killer. Um, the cool thing about this is basically saying that once you've actually attracted 1,000 true fans for your work, you as a creator or as an entrepreneur or as whoever what you're trying to do, you can actually do this and you can quit your job and you can do this full time. When you have 1,000 true fans, the people that are willing to buy your work, support it, show up, et cetera, that equates to you being able to do this in terms of having enough 
purchases over the course of a year typically where you can quit your job and do this thing full time. Now, obviously there's a lot that goes into the price points you're charging and like all that kind of stuff. So it's just a, it's a ballpark idea. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. So doing the campaign, first of all, you get that money, you get that cash in your bank account. Number two, you get access to all of these fans. You got all of these people that are backing your campaign, all these people that are now a part of what you're doing and they're championing you and they're excited and enthusiastic and they wanna go and see your tour dates and they wanna go and download more of your music. The secret to this process is what I'm gonna mention on this next slide, but also with this current one, when it comes to quitting your job, you can't just get one cash injection. Okay, one cash injection to your bank and that be over with it. You can't just do one campaign, right? So the other solution is, well, I could do multiple crowdfunding campaigns throughout the year. And that's completely true. And you can do multiple campaigns. Another idea is to work what I call this like initial fulcrum or this initial boost, or I mean, Kickstarter is a great example, like the kickstarting process, working this momentum into your existing business model. So what do I, what do I mean by that, man? Existing business model, you need to have some kind of a monetization strategy for these particular fans, which are piling in with your crowdfunding campaign. The way that it would look, and just imagine this, okay? Imagine this in your mind's eye. You got tons of people that are coming into this campaign and they're all backing it. They do a financial transaction with you. They give you the hard earned dollars and then they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting for you to then come out with that thing. A real business is based off of actually being able to continue to monetize a similar customer base or a fan base. So you need to have some kind of a monetization strategy that once you brought in all that funding and all those people, how are you going to continue to offer a value? How are you going to continue to do different things in order to continue to raise money from those people? And by raise money, I mean generate sales, right? At that point in time. So you need to have some kind of a monetization strategy. You can get tons of funding and a huge group of people, but it's going to be a one-time event. If you do have a monetization strategy that's based around that, then it can perpetuate and that momentum can snowball and you can build a real music career or a music music business out of this. Now, when I first started talking about this, it can be a little bit difficult to understand. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit simpler here in my next slide. So what's an easy way to conceptualize this? An easy way to conceptualize this is with another type of crowdfunding, which is called subscription-based crowdfunding. So if you're not familiar, subscription-based crowdfunding is basically when rather than supporting you on a one-off event and you get a lump sum of cash, instead, people are supporting you on a per creation or on a monthly basis, okay? So hear me out. It's basically where this person has decided, I wanna get access to rewards, cool stuff, maybe learn about you as a musician or an artist, your process, how it is that you actually come up with your work, how do you brainstorm ideas, they wanna ask questions, they wanna get access to insider artwork, like all that kind of stuff that you might offer to your fans, but they wanna be a part of this community and they want to be a part of it for the long term. So they're subscribed to your subscription-based crowdfunding campaign over a course of time and they're giving you monthly payments, which means recurring income from those particular fans. So this great platform is called Patreon. Um, these guys are, I'd say, number one right now when it comes to subscription-based crowdfunding. Might be different in the next couple of years, you never know. Um, but Patreon, people are typically supporting at the five to $25 a month level when it comes to Patreon. So, you know, if you think about a, a rewards-based campaign, I forgot to add this in here, a reward based campaign, people typically are supporting more along the lines of, I'd say, 25 to 50. And then you have different reward tiers at the 100 to $200. And again, this is because this is a one-off event, right? When it comes to Patreon, uh, this typically is more along the lines of five to $25 a month for these patrons. I'd say that 25 is a lot typically, like you're thinking about in the, in the Patreon scheme of things. However, there are ways to actually upsell people to do even more, $100 a month. Now, there's some really interesting ways in which you can do that. I talk about it in other videos, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. So Patreon, to me, is a great way to conceptualize this. It's like, what if I did a traditional crowdfunding campaign as a musician, and then as my monetization strategy between now and the next time I do a campaign, I end up doing subscription-based crowdfunding, and I'm getting those really loyal followers to support it on a monthly basis and also get access to even more cool stuff that I put out there as a musician or as a band. This way, you have a huge lump sum and you also have a monetization back end where those people are continuing to support you and in that way, you don't have to keep running crowdfunding campaigns like month after month after month, if that makes sense. So this is an easy way to conceptualize it. You don't necessarily have to do subscription-based crowdfunding, but a really easy way to do this. And then number three, this to me is really the equation of are you able to quit your job, right? This is something you can actually do. Um, the way you wanna think of this is it's not just a one-time event. When you learn the skills, and it'll include 
a, a link down below where you can actually learn more about this. When you actually learn these skills, the more that you grow with your brand, whether it's a band or a musician or your personal brand or whatever you're trying to do, the more your brand grows, what ends up happening? You end up being able to do more and more with your Patreon campaign. And we've seen this, like this is like a repeatable strategy where people's brands grow, so do all their other monetization arms or the different channels that they're doing. So their Patreon might grow. In addition, when they're doing Kickstarters and Indiegos, now all of a sudden the crowds that are showing up are massive and are huge, which are bringing in even more people. So in order to quit your job, you don't want to think of this as just like a one-time event. You want to think of this as working in tandem to bring people in, but also you're building your brand at the same time. Uh, during, you know, obviously the time when you're fulfilling rewards, but also throughout the entire year, you have a marketing strategy. You have a game plan when it comes to doing this. And this really, to me, is the difference between people that are making it and people that aren't. If you're taking it seriously, if you're actually studying this, if you're studying success, if you're learning about the tactics, the strategy that goes into this, this is what separates people that are really just doing it as a hobby and people that are professionals at the craft, right? They're really thinking about the business side. So this is a lot I want to go over. Um, I have a great free course for you um, and I'm gonna link that up down below and actually create this with Ian Anderson. Ian Anderson is also a musician. He's done a bunch of different music crowdfunding campaigns. We've collaborated on a couple of different stuff over the years and we put together this free course for you to walk through just step by step through what you gotta do to get funding, to get backers when it comes to an Indiegogo campaign or a Kickstarter campaign. When it comes to actually getting a river of traffic to that project as well. Some of the tactics, some of the tools, some of the proven strategies that go into that, some of the tricks as well to get people to take action. And also, um, one of the cool things I'd say is that, you know, with this, there's many different types of crowdfunding out there. When it comes to this course, I want to give a kind of like a transparent, honest caveat, which is that if you're trying to raise between $10,000 and $65,000, this is a great free course for you. If you're trying to do more than that, I don't think we have the science down when it comes to hitting those kinds of numbers. But if you're trying to go into that sweet spot of 10K to 65K, that is definitely something that I think that you should sign up to this free course down below. It is invaluable information and it's gonna just speed up this process like light speed. So that way you can get back to actually creating the art and the music that you want to create. And you can stop thinking about all this, this fundraising guff, right? This is my passion, but it might not be your passion. So check out that free course down below at crowdcrux.com slash music. I will link that up down below. We've got some great content I would love to send your way, but I tried to keep this video pretty short and to the point. I hope that you did enjoy it. Come subscribe to the channel. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you did, my name is Salvador Brigman, and I will see you next time.